Watch all episodes of Ice Pilots. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Bailey now. This week, now picking up ice. landing gear trouble in bad ice what the f- puts nerves to the test. Don't touch anything. Are we flying in this thing seriously? And Buffalo prepares for battle. I'm about to get blasted by some of the hardest shots of the NHL. When a team of NHL All Stars meets Buffalo Beer League. Out of your hats, boy. Oh, for f- sakes. It's been a devastating week at the Buffalo Hangar. You know what? Right that now is not really a good time to talk about this stuff, okay? The crew is still reeling from a gear collapse on Buffalo C-46. All of a sudden, they just started to veer to the right, and all we hear is the wing scraping on the ground. No one on board has been more shaken than rookie co-pilot David Alexander. It's never happened to me before, right? So. But the cause of the accident has stunned everyone. Hammer was left in the wheel well. Simple as that. It's black and white. Chuck Adams had just supervised an engine change on the plane. This close call has made him very unhappy. Off the rockers there. You feeling better now? Not really. But a new morning at the hangar means it's time for Chuck to get back on the job. Doing this to Joel's airplane, I've never had this kind of shit happen. The Christmas rush is about to slam Buffalo. They need this bird back in the air. How's that wrench there, Roll? The first step, stripping off the damaged engine. All right, everyone getting ready for Christmas. So the rush is going to start hitting us this week. Okay, hey, push it out. We don't have no spares. OK, give her. And we got to get this one in the air ASAP. And they need Chuck back on his game. TXW is going to be like the phoenix rising from the ashes, and Chuck's going to be the maestro of it. There you go. I'll fix the goddamn thing. I'll get this thing ready. But first, they have to scavenge their last good engine from the yard. We do have to put one back on eventually. Or else we're only going to be able to take a half a load. We've got to have two engines to do a whole load. David Alexander is ready to get flying again, too. He's still shaking off the first major mishap of his career. And today, he's getting ready for a mission to the high Arctic. Oh, we're going from Yellowknife all the way up, all the way up, past the map, into the roof somewhere to Holman. It's the farthest north I've ever been, for sure. The flight will cross the Arctic Circle and land in Ulukoktok, once known as Holman, to pick up a load of cargo. When I saw my name on the board, I was, you know, you're excited for long flights like that. You get to go somewhere you've never been. When David hit town two years ago, no one saw this city boy hacking it in the north. When David Alexander showed up, you know, honestly, I judged him. It's cold here. <laughs> He's got a wrapper jacket on, cargo pants, and hat on sideways like this, and talked all funny, and grew up in Toronto. Technically, I'm not a pilot. I haven't really experienced much. He came in looking like he was a squeegee boy off Young Street in Toronto, and I didn't know what we had hired. I'm like, a week if we're lucky. Flash forward a year and a half, not only did he prove me wrong, he is now one of our most versatile pilots. You always be prepared for the worst. So thicker jacket, bigger boots, better gloves. 
Today, David will be flying a DC-3 with veteran Captain Jeff Schroeder. Perfect, all right, let's pull everything, let's get the Bucci out of here. Jeff's a seasonal pilot who usually flies the big C-46. Clear on two, clear on two. He can be a little cranky, but he's the most experienced C-46 pilot in the world. But David's logged a lot of hours in this particular DC-3. He knows its quirks. Today, that knowledge will be put to the test. As David and Jeff work their way north over the Beaufort Sea, the conditions ahead are getting worse. Any change in your ceiling and roof? Uh, look about the same still. Buffalo 722, negative on weather for change. We left the Illinois and checked the weather. It started to get a bit worse. And, you know, I looked over at Jeff and he's like, yeah, we'll, we'll still continue, but if it gets any worse, we're turning around. Yeah, anything straight down yet? Uh, yeah. I can see the water. Don't worry about the turn final 306. Go to Hook Tuck. Go to Hook Tuck Radio at 722. Uh, we're turning final for runway 06. Buffalo 722, we look Hook Tuck. Wind is 3502 at 10. Ceiling and viz uh, still look about the same? Uh, Roger, Roger. As we were descending, we went into cloud and we were picking up a lot of ice really quickly. It can be real dangerous, bad viz, low ceiling. You know, it's pretty shitty conditions, and now you gotta add ice into it. Just days after his first accident, David's heading back towards trouble. It was getting worse and worse and worse. Okay, gear down. Gear down. On our way down here. Oh, you're at five degrees, so you're bearing. Got a wheel. Yeah, I got a wheel. Oh, what? Is that gear going? I had a red light, so I kind of pondered for a second. The red light means the landing gear isn't fully locked into position. And I looked down to make sure I had to walk. And then as I was looking down, he looked over. He saw the red light. What the f happened? Don't touch anything. Don't touch the here. Not now. David Alexander and Jeff Schroeder zero in on a remote Arctic airstrip. What the f happened? With landing gear that won't lock down. Don't touch anything. Don't touch the here. If someone f***s up the gear and approach like that, that's the worst thing that can happen. Sucker. Ah, for f***s sake, what's wrong with spades? The warning system says the gear isn't secure, but David knows every quirk of this plane. He has his own theory. I don't fire. Sometimes the handle doesn't sit in neutral. So the green light doesn't come on yet. I've been flying the three for a while, so I knew that LFR has that problem with the handle. Okay, the gear's coming up. Yeah, put the gear up. They raise the gear for a second attempt. With the visibility getting worse and the runway getting closer, they need to get their gear back down and locked. Okay, we gotta stay over the water. Now we're picking up ice. Put the gear back down, locked it. Made sure the handle was in neutral this time, and we had the green light. Okay. The green light means they seem to have solved one problem, but now they're rattled. Hey, we're at home, we're home back way. Four miles. And have to reposition and line up with the runway, still hidden through the thick cloud. Yeah, it's okay, good, okay, good, okay, good, okay. We're on our way down. Roger. Where's our bearing? Three in the degrees, four degrees. We gotta turn this way. Turn to the left. Turn left. Yeah, I know, I know. You want your, uh, no, I want nothing. Field? No. Should have 
much better paying attention on that gear. I should have been quicker on it. I should have been, oh, red light, that's the handle. I should have been right away, but I knew that I put that gear down the right way. I think everything is just iced up. Gear switches, everything. Sitting out there for four hours. Trying to fly the airplane in icing conditions and then having to recycle the gear, it's going to get anybody's nerves up for sure. David's confident the problem was simply that the handle was slightly out of place. Three flat. Three flat. All four. All four. David's theory about the handle was on the money. The landing gear is locked. That looks like a crap there, right? Yeah. But the weather here is only getting worse. Oh. This hamlet of 400 is so isolated, the crew has brought along their own fuel supply. Hey, time to put it in front of the airplane. And they need to start refueling the plane right away. Jeff was really concerned about getting out of there. So fill up the main first. Okay. Those airports, especially near the ocean, you can get socked in really easily, and really bad weather can come and hit you out of nowhere. So you really want to get, get your shouldn't go as soon as you can. But their ability to get their 17,000-pound airplane back home all depends on one very tiny pump. Nothing. Okay, close it. Close. OK? Right back, it's open. When you go up north like that, you got to be more prepared for everything. The filter was all clogged. With bad weather rolling in off the Arctic Ocean, mechanic Buddy Mercury has no time to try and clean the filter. Jeff has no other option. They'll fill up without the filter and hope the fuel has no contaminants. Better? Oh, a lot better. You got to be quick, but you got to make sure you're doing everything right. The Arctic sun is already starting to set, and their weather window is closing fast. In the direction they're supposed to go, it's looking pretty bad. As soon as we had the loaded and the drums were out of the way, we jumped in and hurried up so we can go home. Early the next morning in the Buffalo hangar, the crew is still tackling the repairs to the C-46, pulling off the damaged aileron. Uh, the leading edge chunk will get scrapped. The outer rib will get scrapped. A couple of the skins on the bottom will get scrapped. What the hell's going on down there? I don't know. She's stuck there, Cliff? Uh, uh. Tell him to hurry the f up. This is getting heavy, Cliff. Now, I held mine. They don't have time for mishaps. Ooh, that lead weight got crushed pretty good. Buffalo needs this plane back at work. Ready? The wing took a big hit when the gear collapsed on the tarmac, and the mechanics need to see how deep the damage goes. I think we should pull open it up to here, just to be sure. The 46 has only fabric covering its ailerons, like most war airplanes, to shave off excess weight. That one's OK. That one's got a little bit of a buckle in it. The mechanics face a big job getting this grounded plane ready to fly. Hey, John, it's uh, Mikey at Buffalo Airways. How's it going? But after the accident, Mikey McBrien's hatching a plan to help lift Buffalo's spirits. I, I, I wanted to bring the NHL players up there, and this is why I'm doing it. Right on, right on. 
John Shabbat is a former Montreal Canadian and a member of the Algonquin First Nation. He's cooking up a deal to fly NHL players to town for a native youth charity hockey game. That, uh, you know, they sold out almost instantly. I uh, drove an hour and a half it took, uh, to sell a ticket, which is great. Um, we can fit everybody on the 1DC3. Mikey wants to take Buffalo's role a lot further than just providing transport. We're a major sponsor in the event, and, and John asked me, well, what, what can we do for you guys? And I'm like, well, honestly, we're hoping that maybe I have some of the Buffalo guys do a quick shootout at the end of the game. Like a competition, you go and shoot on our goalie, and we go shoot on your goalie. Yeah, I think quite, quite funny. Yeah, that'll be fun. I've already spoken to the guys. Honestly, it's a 50% chance I'll get it in, regardless if there's a goalie or not. <laughs> I was ecstatic. Um, you know, it's very rare to get high-level hockey here in Yellowknife. Great show. All right, Mikey. Bye. Saturday. Now, Mikey has to scrape up a team. So I'm just making out, like, a call-out to all, all the rampies and pilots and mechanics who, you know, can skate to come out and try out. So, post that up. Pull one right here for the pilots. Chuck, you got, you got ice skates? Oh, yeah. This is the tryouts. OK. You're going to come out? Oh, yeah. Out? All you need is a ball of steel. I got them. And then uh, some skates. Yeah. And if you got make that it. brand new two Victors. Really? Oh, yeah. I'll kick your ass. Right on. Hey, Justin. What are we doing here? Buffalo versus NHL. Well, that sounds pretty good to me. You know who's the surprise guy who said yes? Chucky. Grace, he must be feeling bad about last week. Oh, here's Chucky here. Did you get a hold of Curtis? Because Curtis wants to play. Eh? Oh, Curtis wants to play? Yeah, give me a thing there, Mike. Yep. Oh. Say, Mikey, why don't we put some skates on for us? Get them out there. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> now Mikey's got to get himself ready for action. You know, I hadn't been on skates since. I didn't want to tell anybody this, but probably about grade eight or nine. So that was a while ago. So I really had to figure out if I could stand up on skates, hopefully somewhat stop, and maybe as a bonus skate backwards. The one thing about Northern Canada is you, you play hockey and you date a figure skater, but I was uh, you know, more of a mascot than I was a player. I, I had a new challenge, and this challenge was very extreme. Here we are at the multiplex. Take uh, a guy that only played second year Adams hockey in grade uh, six and put him against NHL players. And you know what, I was up for that challenge, uh, but I didn't want to do it alone. They're pretty fast. All right. <laughs> Good. Mikey's fitness trainer, Tara, will coach him. Wow, holy cow, where'd you get those? Oh, they're my father's. Those are awesome. But Mikey hasn't even owned skates in years. He's dug out a vintage pair of Joes. Geez, NHL guys are so young now. I don't even think their grandfather had these type of skates. So did your dad wear them, or they, he just had someone gave them to him? I have no clue. They got someone else's name on them. In a while. Bend your knees, bend your knees. Bend, good, go slow. Get yourself used to it. I keep your head up, though. <laughs> good, you can stop. Okay. Whew. Oh, almost. That was good. Use your stomach, okay? Oh, shit. Hopefully he's got a weak everything side. Awesome. Perfect. Oh, no. Whew. Tomorrow, Mikey has to pick a whole team good enough to go up against the pros. Holy crap. That's a little hard. <laughs> it's decision day in Yellowknife. Okay, is everybody ready? Time for Mikey to pick a team to take on the NHL in a shootout. I had to go to a uh, used stuff store in town. Actually found something that fit. Good deal. 100 bucks for a helmet, stick, and skates. <laughs> More of this equipment, and that's just soaking and sticking. They've scrounged up some questionable gear. <laughs> Everything is just soaking wet. Like, the guy must have played an hour with it. <laughs> And their skills are an even bigger question. My skating skills, <laughs> they're, they're terrible. <laughs> when was the last time you played, Chuck? Hockey, about oh, 35 years ago. And now I'll put them on for the first time since sometime in the 90s. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. This is going to be embarrassing. 
<laughs> Only five of them will make the cut. Oh, come on now, Tara. <laughs> no need to be mean. <laughs> touch and go, touch and go. It takes a minute for the hopefuls to find their stride. Go, 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 go. Actually, it doesn't look like such a group of degenerates after all. Have you been like a legitimate hockey team or Uh, no. The real test is how they handle the puck. Tara and I are going to be watching and see your technique, performance, maybe even a little bit of comedy. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go rapid fire, we're gonna see if we can uh, make Justin break a sweat here. Justin, that's damn sure. It's not a hope in hell one of them is going to get a goal on a f***ing any tell goalie. Son of a bitch! Against all odds, Buffalo's most senior skater comes up big. The first person who uh, is going to be picked, David Alexander. Curtis Dyson. And not based on any skill whatsoever, just comic relief. Scotty. Scott Blue. Yeah. And last, our hero, Chuck Adams. Yeah. It wouldn't have bothered me if he didn't call my name, that's for sure. But he called my name. Welcome to the team. Right on, brother. But Chuck, yeah, it's gonna look good on you, pal. So I actually did not too bad. For a guy that hasn't been on skates for a long time, it's not that easy. Our 2012 Buffalo Airways All-Star team. Sexy, man. <laughs> Tomorrow, they're going to meet the competition. The next morning, David preps the DC-3 for his very special passengers. Today, we get to fly uh, some NHL players to Delaney. You get a chance to hang out and rub shoulders with some of the NHL guys. Kind of amazing to, uh, you know, be in the presence of people that have are masters of their craft. And one of them really knows the North. Detroit Red Wing Jordan Tutu. Welcome. Just greasy in here, right? Look at bringing your skates. Fairly good shape too. Mustangs, <laughs> eh? Well, this is when hockey is good, eh? Yeah. Yeah, you can almost have to take this off and wear them oh, dancing yeah. later. <laughs> Jordan's the first NHL player from Nunavut and the first Inuk player. That's made Detroit's right winger a true role model for native kids across the country. He's the first uh, Inuit to make it in the NHL. He's a real inspiration for any youth here. Um, you know, learning to play hockey on the ocean with his father and now uh, ending up with the Detroit Red Wings. Today's tour stop in Delaney, a regular stop on Buffalo's food run, will give the players a true taste of Northern First Nations culture. CL2 team. But first, a taste of Buffalo. Yeah, yeah, it's fully amphibious. And basically, it's a really shitty boat. <laughs> These are floats. Craig Anderson is Ottawa's star goalie. And then uh, that's a DC-3. That's the type that we're going to be flying on today. The gearheads were all for it. They're like all right on, you know, 2,000 horsepower, 18 cylinders. This is for me. I don't know, it's hard to imagine these things flying. Our chartered jets in the NHL is a little different. I'm excited. I love flying, so. You know, in the DC-3, the bathroom's not the best in the world, so if you guys uh, probably should use the washroom right now, it's going to be a little bit of a long flight, so. There's Gatorade <laughs> bottles. Hopefully you guys got Gatorade sponsorship. <laughs> Hey, we got her right up front here. There you go, no assigned seating there. Well, it's a stand up only, eh? Stand up like a bus. Are we flying in this thing seriously? <laughs> Holy shit. 
Where's the safest place to sit on these planes? <laughs> Excuse me, sir, can you please already recline your seat till takeoff? <laughs> There's no emergency exits here. <laughs> These star athletes are about to go for a ride, Buffalo style. On the Buffalo tarmac. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. David Alexander preps for another DC-3 mission with Jeff. This time, their cargo is a plane load of NHL talent destined for Delaney up the Mackenzie Valley, a regular stop on Buffalo's Valley Run. But today, it's a chance to connect with Northern youth in a place many claim hockey was born. This airplane really was in Normandy. She was one of the first 32 DC-3s to go over on D-Day. And uh, we've been flying her ever since. This is my favorite airplane. And uh, some emergency exits there. Some on your left, some on your right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Enjoy your flight. David wants to give this special flight a special call sign. Uh, the NHL one. I think call is NHL one. I think call is anything I want. I couldn't care less. Really? We should. No. So. That's corny. Yeah. Buffalo 419 tower, left turn open clear for takeoff, runway 34. Left turn for takeoff, 419. There's only one person on the plane who's not pumped. The captain. Happy, yeah, we'll be there in about two hours. Dave, Jeff, and Mikey, and et cetera. We're leveling out and I was talking, I'm like, so what do you think? You know, you're flying a whole plane full of NHLers. Like, aren't you excited? Like, you should be so happy, Jeff. <laughs> and he's just like, no. Are you going to go back and introduce yourself? No. Oh. Give him a wave. Hello, I'm Jeff. Oh, hi, Joe. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You don't want to sit down and chat with all of them? Like, you could talk about so much. You're like, what am I supposed to talk about? What am I, how I hate hockey? I don't want to tell them that. NHL, CFL, whatever it's all the same. Just at that moment, Mikey tasked me. Are you okay with uh, George Tutu sits with my seat? Who? George Tutu. So he's a guy from Breaking Inlet, hockey player. Uh, yeah, for a couple minutes, yeah. Jordan's fascinated by the plane. And it's all manual, right? Yeah, it's all manual. Yeah, there's no hydraulics, there's no electrics or none of that. Fancy stuff like the jet -ing. But once you know how to fly one of these, you can fly anything. Yeah, uh, that's pretty well the rule, eh? By the time Grant Clitsum enters the cockpit... You, uh, grow up and yell... No, I, I live at one of them. I play for the chat. The captain's social skills are already wearing thin. I like your uniform. Oh, I like it. Yeah, the new it, I like the old ones better. Where are you from? I'm from Ottawa. How about you? Winnipeg. Pretty pumped about the jet. I don't watch hockey. No. Who do you play for? I uh, play for the Ottawa Center. And Jeff's got a blunt question for Chris Neal. You any good? I'm a third fourth line guy. Works hard. Oh, yeah? Yeah, fight a bit. Even facing off against Jeff can't ruin this flight. Big Yeah, 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 yeah. Big Arkansas over. It's been a great experience for us to come up here. It's awesome. Well, thanks a lot for uh, having me up here. Have a good time doing it. Yeah. You know, these are NHL players. They make millions and millions of dollars. They can do anything they want. And they chose to be on a DC-3 going to Delaney. That shows the character of these guys. You know, they want to give back to the fans. All right, Jeff. Thank you, friends. That guy doesn't socialize. That's all I had to do for an hour. I think deep down inside he had some fun. That's hard work, Jeff. Oh, you think so? I think so. You'll learn to love him now. I don't want chalky. <laughs> 98, three and a half miles. I got the runway right? straight. Thank you.
Delaney, right. hey. the whole town shut down. Everyone goes out to the airport to meet them. It's such a huge event. Hey, Mikey! <laughs> We had a convoy of F-150s. Hi there. How are you? My name's Suzanne. I'm Peter. And we all jumped in the pickup trucks. This is a warm day here. Not bad, huh? <laughs> God, it's cold I wasn't there. Face. I know. You guys are used to it, eh? Yeah, of course. So what do you guys do for fun up here? Do ride. <laughs> First stop, a chance for the players to enjoy some Dene First Nation hospitality and culture. Dene would like to welcome all of you to Precious Lake in the world. I'd like to do a quick prayer. Caribou stew, delicious. We got some stew. Yeah. You guys feel like we're gonna put on like 20 pounds this trip? Yeah. Because so when I travel the north, this is almost like my second home. I'm here so much and I haven't been here in probably five or six years, so it's nice to be back. And the people are great as you can see. John Shabbat's First Assist Charity offers sports and education opportunities to First Nation kids throughout the north. But there's even more to this visit. What's this lake called? Little Lake. This is where it all began, I guess, yeah. Delaney holds a unique place in history and in hockey. In 1825, famed British explorer Sir John Franklin constructed his fort here during his second Arctic expedition. Franklin and his team traveled overland from New York up through Manitoba along fur trading routes. They worked their way along the Mackenzie River all the way to the Arctic coast. On the return trip, they spent the winter in Fort Franklin, today known as Delaney. That's where Sir John Franklin's fort was in 1825. Franklin uh, actually made reference to the fact that his men were playing ice hockey on that lake. So, that, this is where it all started. First place of hockey! Yeah! <laughs> I think some of you are from Ontario, Nova Scotia, you don't believe in that. Eh? <laughs> Can I jump in with you? Yeah, get in. Yeah, get in. Franklin's letter was only discovered in 2003, and the Hockey Hall of Fame has recognized it as the earliest recorded reference to ice hockey. So this is what you call the birthplace of hockey, Delaney, Northwest Territories. Oh my God. Oh, right on. Hey! I'm skating on the ice. Walking around on it. It's too much snow. Holy shit. <laughs> Look at those things. Those are used by the first ever hockey player. <laughs> this ice isn't even or what? Now we can go home and say we skated at the birthplace of hockey. Everyone, just thank you so much. Man, it's been awesome. Yeah, I think I'll be smiling for the next couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> My father's know I'm gone. So I'm gonna get the airplane back. Thank you, Mikey! Thank you, Mikey. When Mikey gets back to Yellowknife, he'll be staring down his new friends in a shootout. It's hockey night in Yellowknife. <laughs> and Team Buffalo is starting to feel the heat. You're not going to get a, a bunch of goddamn orangutans off the street to go shoot against a, an NHL goalie. It'd be kind of like winning the lotto in real reality to get that puck in there. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the NHL First Assist Charity Hockey Game. From the Ottawa Senators, Ole Frank Anderson. But until now, NHL players have never faced off in Yellowknife. Uh, it really was cool, the excitement of the arena, it was standing room only. From the Detroit Red Wings, number 22, Carter Tutu. <laughs> but
But before the shootout, the NHLers are playing their charity game with some locals. And from the first whistle, it's clear. Mikey and the boys are in big trouble. Watching the game, I can actually see why people pay these guys millions of dollars to play for their team. Flash forward to the Buffalo crew, 50% of our players can stop and 25 can skate backwards. So Chucky was the best shooter, so I'm thinking uh, I'm going to just watch Chuck. Whatever Chuck does, I'll do that and try not to do what Scott's going to do. I'm right here. That's, just, that's our initial plan, so. Uh, it will all change once you get on the ice, don't worry. It's NHL, right? So it's the best competition you can get, so it's going to be pretty tough for sure. So while the rest of the crowd takes in the third period, Team Buffalo gets ready. Last minute of play, boys. Hey, okay, boys. It was a long road to get here. We've got uh, right now. We got so we got to think of an order. I guess uh, we kind of left that to the last minute. But uh, what do you think there, Justin? I think our general manager should lead us off here. You think? No, I, I can't go first. Well, first, I think they'll think it's so funny they'll give up and, they'll, and we'll win. <laughs> I think that's the only way we're going to win. I really would encourage you to go first. I'll go first. Yeah! Yeah! I'm about to get blasted by some of the hardest shots of the NHL. Oh, this is going to be a riot. The result of the shoot is going to be the Buffalo Rise shooting on Craig Anderson and the NHL players shooting on Chief Pilot Justin Finley. I didn't do very good. I, uh, I kind of fanned on my first shot. Your know, strategy was just to look so bad. You know, just laugh so hard and <laughs> something gets past him. Where's this guy's weakness? He's growing. But right from the start, the NHL guys are finding the back of the net. Oh! Oh! Buffalo's down by two. It's time to get creative. We had a little trick up our sleeve. Is Scotty up now? Okay, let's go. Well, we'd uh, go up and we'd take the net and behind the, the NHL goalie and move it over to give Scott, you know, a wide open net. Whoa! Nice. <laughs> They've got one on the scoreboard and Justin is shutting the door. Come on, Dave. What a save. Oh! oh! He's, he's so bad right now. Eh? <laughs> now David could tie it up, and he's come prepared. Come on, David. Uh, I was actually watching YouTube videos. There he goes. Watching all these shootout goals. What's Craig Anderson's weaknesses, you know? I wanted to score. Oh my god, that one in. And then I skated around the ring showing my uh, leaf jersey. <laughs> you had that plan the whole way, yeah. Huh? We're even right now. Jordan Tutu could put the pros ahead. David and Justin have given Buffalo a chance. It's all up to one guy. <laughs> I just want to get a standing ovation when they announce my name, man. It's great. As Chuck winds up, tried to flip around and try and backhand her in. <laughs> 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 
totally fucking embarrassing. <laughs> you okay? Oh, yeah. Chuck hasn't won the shootout, but he's won over the fans. The NHL boys seal their victory. Win or lose, after a rough week at Buffalo, Mikey's team is flying high again. Inevitably, one of the NHL guys did end up scoring, but honestly, I think the crowd really liked it, and uh, you know, we made some friends that day. That's true. Yeah, they were pretty good. Like, they were a bunch of good guys. Kind of embarrassing with the end, though, but what the hell? At least I tried. It's a big day in the Buffalo hangar. Just a week ago, Buffalo C-46 was collapsed and crippled. Hang on. The crew has brought her back to life in record time. OK, give her. Pulling the old engine. Touch that wrench here, roll. Prepping the spare. Yeah, push back. Connecting the replacement. I'm in and patching up the wing. This is like the final end game here. <sighs> it's the last step to get this plane back in the air. Hey, how's that, Mark? Perfect. The crew has had to dig to find parts for this 70-year-old aircraft. This wing tip came from a spares inventory from Africa. Yeah, we just had to inspect it for big spiders and beetles and stuff, and it was clean, so. It is better than factory. That's the beauty of a Curtis product. They're all exactly the same. Every ribbon, every stringer, every hole is the same as the next one. Old Glenn Curtis is just smiling in his grave. How's it looking, Mikey? It's looking pretty good. Next time we'll be flying again, and you'll see her roll by and wake everybody up at 6 o'clock in the morning. It's a day that Chuck and the entire hangar have been waiting to see. At long last, the damaged C-46 is ready to fly. And I uh, have number flow 302 is wrong complete. Clear on the left. Looks good to break. Well, the boys uh, work really hard on the airplane, especially Chuck, uh, getting TXW ready to go. Just like in hockey, our teams uh, gel together, and we got her back in here. Buffalo Airways has been through harder times than this, man. We always survive. Hey, let's not load here. I'll get my side. Thanks to your backup and flying, boys. Have a good flight.